I have spent time in like in Idaho. What is going on, Nissan Nation? From all things Nissan here in my studios to wherever you're watching us around the globe, this is your Nissan Nation, and I'm your host, David Boyd. Well, I tried to get Danny on this one, but, um, well, anyways, that's a long story. Danny's Danny's busy man. What is going on, everybody? Oh, man, what a day we've had. I've had all, like, the automotive world right now has me, like, spinning. I've recorded four videos today, and... Let's see. I've got like six videos launching on both channels uh, tomorrow, I believe it is. It's it's freaking nuts, but man, man, whew, can we just get a breathe? Like a, whew, I'm, I am like this. This frontier crap is just like driving me crazy. What is up, Tim? What is up, Joe Taylor, moderator extraordinaire? We got O six. XTOR and we got Nissan Hawaii Nation. Guys, you know the drill. Please like and share this. When you smash like, if people like Frontier comment that may not know about the channel, it tells Google and however YouTube works. It's like, hey, there's symmetry. Let's bring it all together. Anyway, so first off, I am 26 people in here really quick. I do appreciate all that. What is up, John Walsh? <clears throat> dog breath what is going on cameron J. when it, it, where is the reveal date the reveal date is february 4th that's right uh that's a nooner here in uh, central time zone so get ready for that one we will be broadcasting that live here on the channel we will be streaming that and uh hopefully it's better than the armada reveal that's uh that armada it, that left a lot to be desired it was it was it was very bland and I'm I'm really hoping that this this frontier they ha it's a truck man they have to show it do truck things we can no longer just like show a digital image of a vehicle out there and just get people excited by that Nissan especially Ford can get away with it the Bronco a lot of the Bronco stuff was very digital when they did a launch on that stuff there was actual vehicles but a lot of digital CGI stuff when you see interior shots and stuff Nissan cannot get away with that at all like they better. They better open up their wallet for this reveal, and they better start buying some reporters off, basically, because I know there's a, there's a session coming up where the reporters will get the little inside scoop that, sadly, I probably won't get invited to because, well, the Nismo, tight, uh, the Nismo frontier that I, uh, that I dropped in. But um, uh, you'll be in chemistry, Joe? Well, it sounds like uh, you might need to go for a bathroom break around, around noon or there, but I'm I I am excited for this truck. Once again, I they they have to throw the book at this thing, and and hopefully you guys uh, are with me on that. That if they do not show us something really cool, it can't be like here's the like the pictures I have up there. They just can't unwrap sort of a truck and go. Well, here's the they don't not even show any models. They have to show us something to get the fan base excited because. Like, like Holden used to say, he used to call us the barnacles, man. We're the barnacles on the ship that they're just so hard to scrape off, but you, you just keep trying. And for some reason, Nissan is trying to scrape off their fan base, and we all just keep sticking here, right? But uh, let's see. We got Frank B. in the house. What's up, Frank? Um, dude, hey, Tim, you want to jump in on this? I'll bring you in off of Discord if you want. I can hook that up real quick if you'd like to uh, um, join in. Just let me know. Let me uh, make sure my Discord's actually up before I, I run my mouth. But uh, do I do I do I do it? Do I just hit Tim up anyways? I don't know. Um, uh, no, that is noon Central Time, so it'll be one p.m. um, one p.m. Uh, Eastern and whatever it is Pacific. But I I'm for one like 
I, this has been such a letdown. Like all my sources told me, hey, it's going to be January. Nissan backed it up. Um, a video that I'm launching tomorrow on All Train Nation. I just go into a long term discussion on <laughs> Nissan set this up themselves, and it's like their own company can't seem to get their shit together. And anyways, let's see. Let me let me hit Tim up here. Hold on. All right. All right. You got to bear with me, guys. Okay. This is, this is, uh, we're, uh, we're doing this. We're going to uh, attempt to quickly do this, and I'm totally not set up for it. But stick with me. You're going to want to know Tim's insight on this thing. Tim, just a second. I don't have you up just yet. If I can get my headphones where I can actually hear you, Tim. Out entangled in this stupid race setup that I've got going on. Oh man, let's see here. This is going to be this is going to be a rough one, guys. So just seriously, hang with me real quick. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get it on here. Oh man, let's see here. All right, there is there is Tim. I got Tim sort of. You can see his face sort of. But we'll get to this anyways. Tim, can you hear me all right? I think so. I'm, I got to pause my phone <laughs> and play off my computer. So I got, and I'm cleaning up my podcast. Got my camera crap all over the place. I know. I was. So I was yeah, in, I think I got. I was enjoying your show, and I had to jump Maybe. into some Nissan news and do a couple videos, and I, it kind of bummed me out. I was I was enjoying the conversation that we're having. If y'all don't well, know. You know Tim is with Pickup Truck and SUV Talk. Uh, Tim does a, on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, right, Tim? You do a live show and uh, break down the kind of news of the week. Yeah, unfortunately, I pegged myself into a weekly show for some dumb, dumb reason. Why do we do this? I don't know, <laughs> man. <laughs> but, it's like, yeah, I was thinking today, I was like, I have nothing for tonight. Oh, no, I better do something. But yeah, I have to, yeah every Tuesday, uh, 4.30, because my kids uh, get off school at 4.00. And I get done by 5.30 because it's usually Taco Tuesday and I have to have my tacos. That's right, dude. So that's right. Um, that's the time slot. But I but we didn't do Boy Scouts tonight. My young youngest one said no Boy Scouts. And I saw you go live and I was like, I'll hop on. I'll play the role of Danny. I'm well, a better looking version of Danny, I think. I don't, I don't know that, that California kind of weirdness. I don't uh, know that you can play Danny well because usually Danny's the optimist. And with Nissan, you're you're you have some good opinions on Nissan and probably probably wise opinions on Nissan, but um Danny's a little more optimistic in it. So, Tim, as you know, the frontier is just it's just been a mess. For whatever reason, you can all you can just go down to say, well, it's just Nissan being Nissan, basically. They they stumble over themselves all the time. They just seem to be like they don't have direction. And with the frontier, it 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 seemed like last spring when I launched that picture, like there was a lot of excitement for it. And I seen a lot of people jump on that. You jumped on it and did a video on it. We did one together. And there was some excitement for the Frontier, and by that time, we've had Ford Bronco jump out. You've had a new F-150 jump out. You've had all these vehicles pop out, and Nissan still chasing their tail. And and what is going on with the company, man? I, I think it's a direct byproduct of the going years, of the changing leadership. I think there's a lot of stuff going on with that company. I think you're right. I don't think they have a lot of direction as far as moving forward. Um, you know, I remember I was talking to, um, I was in Japan of all places. I keep, I have to say it like that because it was, a, it was a unique trip, but I, I know, was talking that to throwing out like uh, country. Oh, I'm just dropping countries. Just Japan. <laughs> right out there. But, uh, I think you'd need some, I'm trying to remember Richard Miller, Rich Miller was interviewing in, um, after they have a really cool museum there in, um, not Nagoya. Yeah, maybe Nagoya, but anyways, the cool museum, Nissan headquarters was there interviewing Rich Miller. He's the head of. Like full size vehicles, patrol, armada, kind of globally kind of stuff. And I, I remember asked him some questions about like leadership with Gone. Like when your top leader leaves, what's that do to change the direction of the company? You know, and he said, he said to me, he says, no, he goes, you know, we have plans that go out like three, four, five years and we have goals to hit. So right. when we have some changes in leadership, it doesn't change that. But now I have to sit back and wonder to myself, if that were to be true, and and I believe I'm not calling Rich a liar at all. He's a right. straight stand-up guy, and I'm a liar at all. But 
if that were to be true, something funky is going on Frontier. Something's funky going on the, the the company, right? So you're like you're like if if they keep in these targets, and to me it's, and I've been in different businesses. I've been retail. I've been in corporations like that. Whenever you do have leadership changes, it does reset the clock. It does change things up because somebody's viewpoint is from somebody else's viewpoint, and it does change things up. We we heard rumors in the automotive industry that Frontier was done in 2016. We well, heard they, it was complete, ready to show in 2017. Well, the, but we heard were, it was ready yeah. to go. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. In I, 2019. I'd I mean, heard that, that we were getting the Navara is what, you know, and it made sense yeah. that the same body style was the previous Navara, so why not? I've, I've heard from senior people at Nissan saying, yeah, it's right over there in Design Studio. It's all mocked up, ready to go. Mm-hmm. We just want Dave to reveal it. And so you, you have to wonder, like, is senior management is making these changes because I think they're making changes so fast. You got to remember that that when Gohan left, I mean, it was like rapid succession. Two or three other people left at the same time. Leadership flipped over quickly. And so I think those massive changes made it really, really happen. And I and I have to think now, I have to think now that they're they're trying to get this truck to the marketplace. They're trying to launch it, but I have to believe they're running into issues with COVID related suppliers. Well, I, yeah, so, I would definitely think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really wonder if they're concerned about when they launch it, if they're going to have enough to be able to come to market with. So I just heard today that F-150 to F-750 production has been halted. Wow. Because they're running out of some parts, electronic parts for those for those trucks. We have delays. Uh, the Chevy Tahoe diesel is delayed. We got F-150 sitting in deal lots. We got Mach-E delays being announced. So, I mean, it, it, does Nissan really want to unveil a new truck and fall on their face? By not being able to deliver it, I mean, they've had a lot of bad PR lately, and some of it their own doing, and it really makes me wonder if if they're trying to be a little more calculated in how they release products because they're a little nervous. Well, so so I was told last last this time last year that they were going to reveal the truck at the Chicago Auto Show. I I had confirmation by people within the know that oh this is we were going to do it. All of a sudden, two weeks before the thing, I get I get a, a phone call going, Dave. They've they built race trucks. They built a bunch. They were going to really launch this thing. They were going to do something at King of Hammers, and they were just going to like really go out with it. And two weeks before, they were like, somebody shut it all down for whatever reason. They weren't happy with something. I I don't know what it was. I I don't have pictures of the the truck that they were going to build or anything like that. I just this is what insiders were telling me within Nissan, and then. So, I, like I said, I, I dumped that picture out. I had people within Nissan who were mad at me, but they didn't give me the wink about, hey, thank you, because we've been trying to get this thing out for so long. We needed a little bit of good news about this. And that thing generated a lot of good news. And Nissan seems to be that one company that they're a one-car focus. They can only they can only launch one vehicle at a time. They can only like spend – there's a certain amount of money they can spend to get that one vehicle – some notoriety and some attention and then they move on so we got with all the COVID issues you know we were going to have a detroit auto show which i believe is where the uh the uh, rogue was supposed to be shown and and so nissan's focus quickly turned to rogue they get that launch they uh quickly turned to uh the ev aria they uh didn't get that launch but they were you know building some uh some excitement for the brand and then all of a sudden they throw out a z which for Nissan, you know, I know Tim, you don't follow cars as much, but for Nissan, the Z is that's their number one heritage vehicle that they could dump sure. here in the United States. And that thing brought them so much attention. And had they just maybe three weeks later brought the Frontier out, dude, they would have owned the month of, of when was it September? They would have had that. Only people have been talking about Nissan, but yet they stumble. We get an older Armada that they call Patrol in Australia in the Middle East. There was no surprise about that. The kicks we've seen already, like they just, what is it particularly about the U.S. market that used to be the leader when you wanted to debut something, you showed it here. Now for Nissan, it's like we're getting their leftovers. It, it's it's interesting and it's happening globally. Uh, you're looking at like Buick. I mean, Buick's bigger in China than it is the United States. Yeah. You know, you're looking at. Um, there's a lot of there's some funky things going on. It really pisses off the Chevy guys. You can get a regular cab, short bed Silverado, in Middle East, but you can't get in the United States. Right. So I mean, there's just a lot of funky stuff going on, and it speaks to the fact that U.S. has not had the same uh, market share it has in years past. You know, China is now the world's largest automotive market. Yeah. That really makes a big impact. But I think what's what's really interesting with this is that there, and we were talking about this in a little live stream was. You can now 
pick your week and you can now decide when you want to launch something and actually control that week. Right. Yep. So, I mean, you, you, digital reveals, right. Yep. And so what I find fascinating now is that not only is the frontier going to be unveiled February 4th, but you have <laughs> Raptor being unveiled February 3rd. Right. So, you know, I, I'm sorry. The frontier is a cool truck. Yeah. Ain't no damn Raptor. It ain't going to be a Raptor. And the Raptor is going to dominate the news cycle that entire weekend. Like well, it's going to, the frontier was supposed to debut this past week. Everything I was told, it was supposed to, and it would have been perfect. There was nothing going on. Nobody was really no, making yeah, any exactly. news, and it's like it's like the big blockbuster movies. They're going against the the latest action film, and and it's like they're a rom com. Nissan's the rom com, and it's never going to outdo that action film in Raptor. That's and like you were saying, no. they get to choose the dates, and it's not like somebody at Nissan never knew when Ford was about to launch a Raptor. They all know no, those guys. To each other. Yeah, they, they all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they know. I mean, they're sitting in a the bar. They're you know they're calling their buddies. They're calling their, their places. They're all interconnected. But I just find it fascinating that somebody didn't say, "Hey, hold off," because the Ford Raptor news broke a couple of days before we got the Nissan Frontier breaking news. Mm -hmm. And so it's fascinating to me that leadership would have said, oh, "It's a digital reveal." Like it's a digital reveal. Yeah. Like you and I do live streams. Yeah. You pick the date. Uh, okay, we're gonna move it to the next Tuesday. Change our emails real fast. <laughs> make it next Tuesday. You know, it doesn't matter. It's a digital thing. You're not like flying people in. You're not doing something in person. I mean, I, it, that's how I would see things. And so I, I just find it fascinating that that's the way it happened. And it's gonna be interesting to see what happens at Frontier. You know, it's like like we we've heard it's been done. We've heard it's been re redone. We've heard it's all new styling. All this, all that. You know, you reported on the Nismo version of it. I mean, so it's, there's a lot of stuff, energy going behind that. But is it going to be a Navara knockoff? Because at this point, you really have to wonder about Nissan's R&D budget. And you really have to wonder if they had to go back to make some changes, whether or not they had the profits to be able to pay for those changes. You know, right. Nissan dumped, uh, you know, they had the worst year ever in, in revenue. I mean, they lost a lot of profit. So. Right. As shareholders are going to be like, why would you spend another, you know, six million dollars to make a change? And that's the thing people understand. It's like, it's like when you go back to R and D and you decide to make the door handles two inches shorter, right? That's a that's a beginning of a, a domino effect that affects many other things throughout the truck. Your suppliers, your some some line guys, you know, how does it get built in the build process? You just make all these different changes to go back. And so you have to wonder, like, what was the big, hopefully it was not a big change, because it was a big change. That makes sense why it took them a full year to come out with it, because you're making, small changes are fast to come out with, but boy, you got to be really careful when you make these big changes and spending the R&D money and justifying it to your CEO and your shareholders that you need to make this change, this product, because you're going to make it sell better in a market that is, you know, the mid-sized truck market is one of the fastest growing markets. Full size truck sales have kind of hit a wall. I mean, we kind of, there's not much more growth there. Mid-sized trucks have really taken off, which is why you're seeing more competitors. You're seeing a Jeep Gladiator in there. You're seeing um, the Honda Ridgeline got redone. You're seeing that, you know, the Rivian EV truck could even be a mid-sized and thrown in that segment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're seeing the Ford Ranger came back, basically borrowed overseas. You're seeing a lot of competition in that segment. And so I really have to wonder, is that going to be good R&D? Did they going to spend the money? Because they've always been the value leader in that in that segment, and now they're not. Well, what happens if, I mean, we've obviously, you can see on the screen, you've seen the, you, we have a great idea what this truck is going to look like now. I mean, obviously when you see paint colors and there's some excitement, they can do that way, but we have a pretty good idea. We know the frame under this truck is the, the same frame, which is not a big deal. I know for Nissan fans that are like, oh my God, they're just using the same frame. Guess what? If it ain't broke, you don't fix it. Every other manufacturer, you would never know when they do a next generation truck, they don't always redo the frame. But no. so so we have a great idea. We know the motor already, which I think was a huge mistake on Nissan's part to to dump the 3.8 in the old body. But they did it in the nine speed. And and I'm hearing a little bit of grumblings about the nine speed doesn't seem to shift points are a little weird. And I think what they're using that in the 2020 to get the 2021, 2022 right for for when it launches. But it's just. I, I'm, dude, I, I, my mind is just boggled how, how they continually just keep screwing this thing up. And like you said, in a competitive market, now the Ridgeline drops for, I think sales drop with the third or fourth that actually launches their, their model four sales. You've got Raptor, like you were saying, um, 
you know, Bronco Bronco sales actually start tomorrow, so people can go to their dealers and be excited about dropping some money on their Broncos. Like they couldn't have, picked, it was like a, a tropical storm that they decided yeah. to go on vacation on and just didn't pay attention to the radar. Well, look, I mean, you get the Ford Maverick that's going to come out by in this year. It'll be a unibody, really true compact truck. And and again, Nissan was selling quite a few Frontiers, but they were selling them because they were the most inexpensive truck out there. And you could still get a regular cab. I think they still did regular cab. Or, no, they didn't do regular cab. They still get... You still get the small truck. You still get a smaller truck. It was physically a smaller truck than the Colorado was, than the Ranger was. And so, you know, now you're removing that value proposition that you had before. You're trying to be as competitive as the other automakers out there. And now to me, instead of being away from the noise, you kind of blend right into the noise. Yes. Yes. And they... you look at like, you know, a Ford, a Ford Bronco truck has been talked about. That's going to be a midsize truck. Yeah. And you talk Rams, I mean, Rams been beating around the bush about doing Dodge Dakota refresh, uh, coming back with something like that. So there's, I mean, I just wonder at some point what the max that market's going to be and whether Nissan has missed its window of opportunity. By 16 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or at least by by seven. Um, well, but we know profit is where these midsize trucks are at because they're br the price that they're bringing is damn near full size price, and you're getting let half the vehicle, half the the capabilities and everything. Yeah. But the profits are way high on these things. So, if Nissan were to miss on this vehicle, and I was trying to get to this earlier, so we know what the truck looks like, we know what the engine's going to be, other than maybe the interior really getting a feel for the quality and what they're putting in on that. If this truck pops out and it's a flop, man. This really hurts Nissan a lot, right? Because this is a profit. The last Frontier went 16 years, and it was a profit machine for them. If this one doesn't hit it like the Titan, because you can compare this to the Titan a little bit because they're leaning on that that design cue just a little bit, they could have a real mess on their hands. And maybe maybe in five years, they're not making a pickup anymore. So Nissan doesn't like me talking about this because they get angry about that stuff. But I have the same point of view you do is that you know, there's there's conversations that I have with other engineers about uh, economies of scale. We talk about economies of scale and how you make profit on a truck. So if you look at things like the Honda Ridgeline sells, I don't know, like 2,000 trucks a month. The only reason that exists is because it's a Honda Pilot without the bed. Right. Because they shared the R&D, right? right? So, I mean, that's how you make that work. If you have, if you look at like the Jeep uh, Gladiator, last quarter sold 16,000 units. That's getting closer to Jeep making the business case to keep that truck going. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't, you got to sell in the 20, 30,000 range on either a quarterly or a yearly budget, depending on what kind of truck you're building. Right. The problem in the Nissan Frontier is going to be is unless it's going to share the same platform and a, a variety of parts that the Nissan Pathfinder has, which would make some sense to be on both the same day, it's going to hurt the business case if it's that much more unique. Yeah, but they got to sell volume if it happen. Does that mean though? It do, I mean, and I've talked about this a lot. It does need a build partner. Obviously, there's no other manufacturer needs another midsize truck to just stamp their name on it. Does that mean that Nissan really needs to look at something like what what the Forerunner is for Toyota? They need they need something that complements this vehicle that they can keep stamping out the same suspension, same frame. And and I I know my my fans love the Xterra, which I don't ever think they're the nameplate just wasn't exciting enough anymore to kind of keep that nameplate going. But do they bring a new, maybe a new midsize SUV? Does it, because it does need something to complement it. And where they're building this in Canton, Lord knows Canton has, they can put a lot of vehicles out, but they, they're only building overflow Altima. They build a Titan that's not selling and they're building a, a frontier that now is not selling because everybody knows this truck's about to launch. I think so. I, I, you know, if you look at Nissan, they're shrinking as a company. So as you shrink as a company, the last thing you want is more variety, right? Mm -hmm. So the better place to be is to have more commonality between vehicles, make them unique in ways you can, but share as much as you can. That's why you're seeing like, <clears throat> there was talk about a new Toyota Tundra and Tacoma sharing a frame. There's been talk about shared parts globally. I mean, there's a reason why automakers are trying to make the same door handle for 17 different vehicles. Yeah. You know, I mean, the commonality of parts is really where you're going to increase profit. 
And so if you look at Nissan, look at Nissan globally, they really need to copy the Navara. I mean, they need that Frontier to use a lot of Navara parts. They need, they need the Pathfinder to use a lot of, of Navara and Frontier parts because then they can make the business case that the R&D and spending and their cost in that truck are going to be lower. And, you know, dealers need that too. Dealers need some margin on this truck because, you know, trucks these days have gotten so competitive. It's no matter what you do to your truck, it's cash in the hood that makes it sell. Right. And, and, and so, you know, dealers have spot. a hard time selling trucks anyways, for whatever reason. I'm, I mean, the Frontier's always done well and the old hard bodies did really well for Nissan. But uh, there's people that don't know Nissan actually still builds a truck. So, yeah, more than ever, dealers need something to make some money on and the trucks are profitable. Yeah, I, I've argued for the longest time that Nissan has a dealer issue. They have a really a, a bad dealer problem. Right. And the reason for that is, is historically Nissan was an import company. When you have an import company, you, you tend to establish along the coast. Mm -hmm. And along the coast of the United States, you tend to sell a lot of cars. I mean, you just do, right? So I don't, I don't need a full-size Titan in California, in Los Angeles, right? Right. That'd be cool. <laughs> but but I, I don't really need one, right? The, the Altima, the Sentra makes a lot more sense in, in L.A., and so you have these dealers who have been for years selling Sentras and Altimas along the coast and have been profitable doing it, getting fat on it. And the last thing that people like to do is change. And so why they can't, it's a hard time for them to change. It's like, you have to have those dealers who understand trucks, who understand truck market. And, and I did a survey once I looked at like Dallas, Fort Worth area. So between Dallas and um, Dallas, and not San Antonio, Dallas and Houston, I think is what the corridor is. The more full size trucks are sold there than anywhere else in the world. Right. And if you look at the numbers, it's like, for example, it's like 20 to one for dealers versus Nissan dealers in that area. And that's tough for me. The closest Nissan dealer is 150 miles away. Right. I mean, and, and I live in a real rural area of Nebraska. We sell a lot of brand new trucks out here. And so that's an issue. They, they need to expand the dealer market. And but it's hard for them to get new dealers on the plate when they've had issues with a stair stepping program in the past. They've had dealers pissed off about it. They've had the company's been struggling. You know, if you're a dealer and you're looking, I'm going to expand. I'm going to add Nissan brand under my shop. And here's a company that doesn't hasn't had new product for a while, is struggling financially, and has a really weird stair step program that's been criticized. Do I want to add the badge to my shop? Yeah. And, you know, it's it's not really a good value proposition. Well, and then then you add like the the cash drain that Infinity is to the brand. Like they they have too many. I know you were saying they need a lot of commonality, but in some <laughs> in some ways it just doesn't even help with within like the Maxima being the same is, is like a a uh, QX or a Q50. Like there's commonality, and it still for Nissan doesn't seem to work. It's almost like what GM used to be when they had Buick, Pontiac, and all these brands that just were the same car. They just put a different nose on them and in a different badge like nissan of course the industry is shrinking too and and nobody needs to kid themselves about that that in 20 years i think we're going to have half the brands that we have now i just think that's the way it is if these brands don't convert to electric now which me and you both are real iffy on on electric the the viability of it right now but the market is about to completely change look there's what Volkswagen they're they've just recently partnered with Ford because they want to build something they have to do it together at some point somebody's going to buy up Nissan and, and and Renault and all these companies they're going to have to let go or they're going to be gobbled up you know Renault wanted to merge with uh FCA and look yeah. that didn't happen because Nissan didn't want it to happen and the French were trying to sneak that in real quick and you know even even GM's not not they could be gobbled up by somebody else. We don't need to kid ourselves that all these companies will just be solid one day. And Nissan is ripe for the somebody to take it over. There was a rumor that Honda should take them over. They should merge. And Honda was like, whoa, <laughs> we know what we're doing. Yeah. We're, 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 we're good with that right now. But in many ways, a Honda bit, it would benefit Honda because they don't build really a truck. There's certain things that Nissan does. But to your point about these things, like you don't need a Titan on the coast. People don't want cars anymore. And that's a problem for Nissan, and I think it's going to be a problem for Toyota. If Toyota didn't have, like, Tacoma sales, I think they would be a little more nervous about their the car industry. And look, it's not really hurt Ford or GM to stop selling cars. Yeah, I, I posted something on Facebook the other day, I think you saw, where a guy... So my, my channel is Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, right? So I do trucks and SUVs. 
And the guy like commented, he says, you know, I totally get this channel now because in five years, everything's going to be SUVs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I kind of was like, I, dear Lord, I hope not. I'm already busy <laughs> as hell right now. I can't, you can't, you can't get, I can't even like, I can't even, con I can't even do the entire industry right now because I can't even cover everything because there's so many new products coming out in that. And not yeah. only that, but you know, the uh, niche and unique boutique EV makers are doing their own SUVs these days. I mean, everybody's trying to do something like that in that space because you're right. That's what's selling. And so I, I think you you are right. You're going to see brands disappear. Like we're going to continually see brands disappear and get, and get less brands because the R and D costs of building a vehicle have increased dramatically so much over time because it's so much more computerized technology heavy. And we talked about this tonight where somebody was asking about the new 12 inch screen I have. I, I bought an F-150 for my channel. And a new 12 inch screen I have, and they were worried about like what happens coming after warranty. You know, are you concerned about that as far as electronics? I said, Yeah, I am. But keep in mind, that's what the customer's wanting. You go down to the kicks, you go down to the these Rogue Sport, I think they still have that thing. Mm -hmm. You go down there, and it's got full of technology because that's that next buyer. They want the stuff in their trucks, they want the stuff going on, and they want those electronics because that's what they're used to. That's what you're growing up to. So you gotta, you know, that next buyer buying the kicks now. You want them to buy the Armada Platinum Reserve for their family in six years, yeah, right? Yeah. So you want to walk them through that that brand talk and get them to that next point. And you had better take technology you're getting from the kicks and keep expanding through the bigger role. And when you keep doing that, your costs reduce it and R&D keep going higher and higher. Then you add hybrid technology and you know, EV technology. And it's like, it's a lot more expensive than it used to be. Throwing a V8 in a truck, putting some wheels on it and putting a nice little color red coat on it and calling right. it good. Right. And well, and you know, Nissan was in a great position for EV and for some reason they just, just stopped. They, they relied on the leaf. Oh, the leaf's going to really help find that market for us. And the leaf never took off. Uh, even though Nissan, well, they were a leader in the EV tech for a long time. Uh, they were late to the game now for whatever reason, they didn't want to compete with uh, Tesla and they, their ranges and everything in their EV tech was fairly similar to Tesla, but Tesla only had to worry about EV or Nissan was spread too thin. Mm -hmm. Well, I really think, you know, you were talking about moving people up, customers up in cars or trucks. I think part of the problem is they just have too many options. Like, so the Sentra in the 80s was the entry level Nissan. You had, and then you had a hard body pickup or the old 720 pickups, and that was the only pickup truck you were going to get. And then you would move up into a uh, Stanza or so, whatever Nissan had at the time. They had maybe three cars. Now you've got a Versa, a Sentra, uh, a Maxima, an Altima. Like you, and they are only changed by a thousand dollars usually. If you look at the what you can get for per car, it's only almost a thousand dollar difference. There's too many options, and for Nissan they almost can't afford to kill some of these options because it's all they've got. Yeah. I So I have an Infiniti QX80 in the driveway. And for life of me, I can't tell you the difference between that and Armada. I just, I don't know. Oh, there's not you know, much. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like interior and price point. It's, it's the same issue that Cadillac has with Escalade versus the Yukon and Tahoe. The, the benefit they have there is they have nameplate recognition. And that's the thing that yep. Nissan doesn't have. They, they, you know, nobody's, nobody's going, oh, I saw their... Uh, armada in csi right yeah. and the member of yeah. the yukon was doing oh, csi yeah. and they all had those black tahoes or black yukons whatever it was you know they don't they don't have that same appeal and they don't have that same name brand recognition in the marketplace that's really gonna hurt them i i just i remember i asked nissan a few years ago i said you know can you define who you are as a company and and the person i was talking to couldn't because you know nissan used to be a sports car company mm -hmm. And they were known for sport, you know, driving excitement or uh, excitement, whatever their, their tagline was. And that's what they were doing. The Z was a sports car company. And then, then they became a value brand, right? So they became the value brand seller, you know, and they sold a lot of volume of centers, a lot of volumes of, of fleet vehicles. And now they're saying, we're not going to sell very much fleet anymore. We're not going to sell this anymore. We're not going to do that. So then I'm like, who are you? Like, like Ford's yeah. a truck company. Yeah. Toyota's a reliable car company. Honda's a reliable car company and the bill is really great generators, right? And <laughs> small engines, right? So, I mean, from, from Mazda is a driving excitement company. Uh, GM builds trucks and SUVs, full size SUVs that really makes sense. FCA does, I, I, I want to put a Hellcat in that. That's yeah, what FCA, I want to do. They that. need to change their name so, just to Hellcat. That's it. Right. So, I mean, I mean, I, I guess, excuse me, Stellantis. Yeah, I was going to say Stellantis. Company that, yeah, that is not their logo FCA, should but, have been the Hellcat symbol, and that's it. Right. 
but I mean, you know, it's like it's it's even then you could rationalize and easily tell somebody what what brand was, and a brand recognition was easy to, to grab hold of. Well, and you're, I think that's Nissan's biggest problem. They didn't. Well, brand, you're, they, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right with that because if you look at just we'll take we'll take Dodge Ram right now because that's basically the only brand left of of all the companies that used to be there and Jeep, but they learned real quick. They they built poor cars. The interiors were shit. But they their their design team was great. They had it. They just for whatever reason couldn't get it all the way to market. What did they do? They revamped their their interiors real quick, and they threw as much horsepower in a vehicle to build as much excitement as they as they could. And what is it? You know, you would know better than I would. What has that done for Ram pickup trucks? Like oh, night and day, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely, sword. Yep. And yeah, I mean, they made the right move. So the question is. What is the right move for Nissan? What is, what is the right, you know, it's, it's one of those questions I have. And that's where we talk about, like, you know, talk about Xterra, talk about that that true off-road, you know. I, I remember I was talking to Rich Miller again with, when he launched a Pathfinder. We were down in Dallas talking about it. And 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 I gave the criticism. I said, you know, people said you killed the Pathfinder. You made it a unibody vehicle. And he made the argument. He goes, I'm selling 10 times as many as I used to because the other one wasn't selling it well. Yep. And I'm like, I agree with you there. However... You really muddied the waters on who Nissan is, and yeah. you really muddied the waters on what that vehicle is. And well, so, and, and Pathfinder, Pathfinder, you're on to that because Pathfinder, if you look at any of the little auto forums, there is either the old school Pathfinder guy or the soccer mom person that just wants to know how to fix something in that car. They're night and day different yeah. markets. They don't intermingle at all. And I get it. They took a billion dollar nameplate and they just needed to put it on something. So. It's like the Blazer. I mean, the the new Chevy Blazer just killed that heritage. I mean, that thing. Yeah, and like it, that. the Blazer's fine. I mean, it's 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 selling. And and the, the I think the difference there is is Chevy has a lot of brand recognition. Mm-hmm. Nissan as still an import company, and then they'll they will always be seen as Japanese company. That's mm-hmm. and they really are. But I mean, they will always be seen that way in the U.S. market. And you can't do that as a Japanese company. Imagine imagine Toyota killing the Forerunner. I mean. That thing, that thing's been around since the '80s, and it's hell. It's been the same design for the last ten years. And when Japan was actually talking about killing that Forerunner, mm-hmm. and the U.S. engineers went to battle over that, yeah, they got pissed. They went to battle. They fought for. They brought you know because they understand the heritage from that. They're killing the Land Cruisers this year, but you know they're going to bring something back next year. Oh, you well, know, so yeah, it's like F- they understand their heritage. FJ, they're definitely bringing back an FJ style, something smaller because. And that, yeah. that's something that you can compare to Nissan. So we brought the Patrol, a Patrol Light, we'll say, and called it our Armada. They they could have battled. They could those two brands could have could have battled each other and probably get pulled sales off of of Suburban or or Yukon or something. But the both brands just went. Nah, it's we don't get that market. We'll just. And Nissan thought, well, it's we'll call it the Armada. People are they'll buy if they buy six thousand a month or whatever. We're happy with that. GM, like you were saying, they've invested heavily into that that market. They know that market better than anything. They want they want that market. And Nissan with a truck, like like with, I always make fun of this. Like Gone was such a cheapskate. And he, that's why they brought him to head the company. They needed to cut a yep. lot of a lot of fat off that company. Unfortunately, to do that, you got a half-assed version of a Titan, especially not the first gen because that was in development when he took over. But the second gen was a, a mixed bag of just garbage. I like the truck. I think the suspension, the motor, and everything is a great truck. The outside of it is a cluster F. Um, but they 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 let that guy run his company into the ground. Basically, he was there too long. A guy like that that can cut costs. You let him in there five years, then he moves on. You let yep. you let Nissan you let Nissan Japan take it back over and run it how they should have. Now, now the same way you were saying, well, we knew in sixteen the frontier would there was one there. Yeah, I was told by inside sources that they were trying to reuse the same seats out of the previous out of the, the current frontier in that truck. They were trying to like just cheapen this thing as much as they can because Gon was chasing volume, not actual quality and excitement right yeah i mean and they had that they had that power struggle now that this is the shell of the company that used to be there it's not anywhere near as powerful as it used to be and it's it's sad because the titan like you said could have been a really good truck it just was some fundamental 
issues with design they didn't see, which was kind of mind boggling. And they just had the wrong leadership in different places. And, and I like the Nissan guys. I mean, they're great guys. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've talked to them and, and, and good people. It just, it just didn't work out. But I think what's, what's interesting with them is they, I don't know if they don't know how to throw the towel in. They have too much pride in throwing a towel in because they've already killed the sales in Canada. Yeah. And it's the Honda. The thing is, I tell people the statement and it really puts things in perspective. The Honda Ridgeline outsells the Nissan Titan. Yeah. It does. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and in truck world, you know, it's the Honda Ridge that I hated. So it's like, mm-hmm. when you make that statement, it's like, wow. I, I told that to a guy. He like went to his hotel room. We were staying at an event. He checked the sales, came back downstairs. He's like, holy F, you're right. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's not, there are, what the, you could say with, uh, say there's Ford, Chevy, Ram, GM. Say, say, that, say you got five in Toyota, right? So you got Nissan in sixth place, but it's actually Nissan's in like 11th place. Mm-hmm. It's not, they're not even close there. And I just, I wonder like, I, I wonder what the thought process is there in keeping that going and keeping that volume. That's not becoming something like at some point I, you talk about car brands becoming less. Like we looked at Stellantis, right? So we talk about yeah. Stellantis brand. You know Chrysler is going to go away at some point. Chrysler will kill the 300. The Pacific is gone, right? So yeah, I mean, that's all they they'll, have. They'll lose some brands. It's it, they'll lose some brands that way. But when I look at companies, I also look at the fact of, okay, what if Nissan killed the Titan, and let's say they kept the Frontier around, right? And then they would merge with a truck company, who would fill the gaps of trucks and you know on body SUVs. Yeah. And then Nissan would keep maybe the Z and the Leaf and rebadge the Frontier. Right. That would that would make a business case to to stay around. I think nowadays, I think about the business case of Nissan existing as a company. That's where that's where the news has been, and it's it's not good globally. And I don't know if it's it's ever going to come back to the United States. And you have conversations now about you know should Nissan pull out of the United States completely? Like it's 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 and I don't think they should. I'm just saying those are the conversations that are going on in the media. Right, right. Yeah, because if, if it wasn't for basically China and the United States, Nissan wouldn't exist. I mean, they're popular within their own country, but the, there's not enough volume there to sell to your own people mm-hmm. and stay afloat. But what I, I think for Nissan, and I don't wish this on anything, but I do think that, that a, a new brand like, like however you pronounce it, Stellantis, um, that they gobble up that it's just going to continue that these brands are just going to keep gobbling up each other and they're going to want Nissan for their EV tech because that was the whole desire to merge with FCA the last time. They didn't want anything other than they had no desire to be with Renault, but they wanted Nissan's patents on their EV tech because companies like FCA were way behind with their EV technology. I mean, like way behind, even, even a hybrid technology, they were very behind. And the easiest way to do that, to gain a step is to buy the company that's doing it. Um, it, even the, 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 um, direct electric vehicles now, um, uh, you just mentioned a minute ago, a Rivian, all they are is a shell for Ford. Really? Let's be honest. It's a test market and they partnered with Ford. Ford has a big chunk of them. They're, Ford's getting a lot of their EV tech for the new F-150. Mm-hmm. And eventually, I think companies like that, all they are is just tech companies anymore. What happens to tech companies? They just keep merging and merging and merging. And all they want them for is their patents. Yeah. But, you know, going back to Frontier, I, I think that there is a tremendous amount of pressure on Nissan to get this right. Yes. You know, I mean, like I said, it's so competitive. It says market's getting even more competitive every day. We have a new Ford Ranger coming out this fall. Mm-hmm. Colorado is going to get redone 2022. GMC Canyon is getting redone. I know that Tacoma is right around the corner. It's yep. going to go Tundra first, then Tacoma. Because Toyota is not going to give up the mid-sized truck market that easily at all. Ooh. So w- when you look at that marketplace, I just feel like that's why the delays have been, because they know they can't screw that up. And to me, it's at this point, they have got to get a home run. They, well, if there's ever a brand need to win, Nissan yes. needs a win. They need they need a win. Yes. Well, well, tell me this is because I I appreciate all the time you've given me here. As we wrap uh, up with you here, Tim, for the Frontier to be a win for Nissan, 
what do they do they lean on horsepower what do they lean on for it because trucks guys like horsepower it's it's an american thing you can never have enough horsepower um obviously we have a, a base of what the engine can do what is it 310 i think right now is the kind of the yeah, horsepower exactly. this next truck i think it, it, at least five to seven more horsepower it has to improve from that what they have now just on paper it has to look better um Obviously, it's never going to compete with the likes. I know. I know my off-road audience want this thing to compete with, uh, with the uh, the Gladiator or a Wrangler or stuff, but it's not built to compete that way. It's built to be a pickup truck that can go off-road. Um, where is the the home run to get them some attention for this vehicle? I, I think it's got to be something unique. It's got to be something that stamps the brand forward, right? So it's mm-hmm. got to be unique features it's got to be a unique design it's got to be unique interior unique it needs uniqueness either it's got because you know look at they dropped the manual transmission so it doesn't have uniqueness anymore on that they dropped regular cab don't have that uniqueness there anymore you know so so where is a unique feature that makes them stand out you know they can't just put a new lipstick on a pig on the old truck and make it make it there right it's got to be unique and it's got to be something different you know these days, customers, they want those little things like the new F-150 hybrid I have. Yeah, the hybrid's all right. It's the 7.2 kilowatt power on board in the back. Yep. You know, you look at like the uh, Ram Rebel. It's that you can do a diesel in that and you can do a lift on it. You can do tires. looks pretty badass. You can do air suspension if you want to. You know, it's Chevy Silverado. It's three liter diesel. That makes it stand out. Tacoma, known for reliability. You can get the TRD Pro. You can get... Until last year, you could get a snorkel. They killed a snorkel, but you could get a snorkel on what? it. I mean, so it, yeah, the desert air intake, what they're trying to do. But but they <laughs> even Toyota got it. They knew that there's got to be something unique. Gladiator is a unique product. Mm-hmm. Ford Ranger hasn't sold that well because there's nothing really unique about it. Honda Ridgeline, it actually has a lot of fans because uniqueness mm-hmm. in trunk bed that, that you can uh, open up and have like a cooler in their bed. I mean, you got the. Uh, front wheel drive aspect of it you can do an all-wheel drive aspect of it you have a really cushy interior a really comfortable drive i mean so they have those unique features it's it's the thing is they need to give me ammo to be able to tell the audience there's something unique about this product and this is what i like about it but and you're, a tr- unique- you're a truck guy though uh, but what is what is something that nissan could do that to kind of make other the other guys much like what what uh, the TRX did to the Raptor made Ford go, Oh shit, we better put a V8 back in this thing because that scared them. What can Nissan do to kind of make the others go, Oh crap, man, because Nissan is known for unique things like the, the, in the bed, the, the bed attachments and all that, that was a very Nissan thing before anybody else. Everybody else seems to get attention for it when Nissan comes out with it and they just sort of just take it. Nissan needs I don't know if it's motor or what they need to do to stand out. My off the wall thought on this, and this is pretty off the wall, is if you look at the midsize truck market, you have basically the what I consider the old man's truck. The Ford Ranger drives nice, he's gonna get out of you have should kind of have the same idea. And you have all these trucks that do off-road well, right? So they have the off-road trucks, you have the the Colorado ZR2, you have the Gladiator Rubicon off-road. I'd like to see Nissan really go back to the racing heritage and build a sport truck. Yeah. Really flip that dynamic, really flip the dial and say, you know what? Off-road's been done. Midsize old man's truck's been done. Let's flip the dial. Let's get younger audience interested in their brand. Let's build a Nismo that is lower to the ground. We're going to improve the exhaust. We're going to add more cool flair to it, flare factors to it. And we're going to entice that younger audience to say we're a sexy hip brand yeah. and that we're going to be able to fast truck. We're going to take that, that the V8 we're going to, or the V6, we're going to put a turbo on it for this customer. We're going to, we're going to do the things we're going to add racing stripes or something. You know, let's, let's go back to the sport truck. Like that has been uh, long abandoned in the marketplace mm-hmm. and for not a really good reason. And, you know, let's avoid, let's, let's go from lifted trucks to lower trucks. Let's get back to that idea of let's make a lowered sport truck that is an in-town kind of truck that, that people would like that would be different. Right. Let's not just make another ZR2 competitor, a new Rubicon competitor. Looking at the marketplace, where can they be unique? I think it's going to be in a sport truck because no thing out there is like that. 
Well, but guys like four wheel drives, though. I mean, that it's sure, always a sign of toughness. Yeah, you, I mean, you can still build that. You can still build the Pro Four X. You can still build that off road version. Do you not but think really, that? Do you not think that anything do you, they would ever add diesel or anything to this? Because you know they they had toyed with the idea. You know, they'd put a 2.8 liter diesel, Cummins diesel in this the thing. Cummins repower, yeah. Yeah, and, and obviously it kind of burnt them with uh, Titan. But I know I get this question asked more probably than anything about front Frontier was, hey, well, they need to add a diesel. Now, you, you've you drove a lot of diesel vehicles, especially here lately. It's a lot cleaner than it used to be. But mm-hmm. are they as practical, and would it be practical in a mid-sized truck? I, I tell people all the time, I get asked this question, especially full size, but in, in, a, in a mid-size truck, the diesel case is really hard. And it's hard because your cost benefit on the ROI. Um, diesel typically run between two to $4,000 more. And your fuel economy is going to be, it's not that much better over the span of a year. And you have higher diesel prices have gone higher because of ultra- there's a lot of discussion about why diesel prices got higher. Just heard another argument that said diesel prices went higher because of ultra low sulfur diesel, and there's been changes there. So, you know, it used to be diesel used to be cheaper, used to be cheaper to buy, and wouldn't run more fuel economy. So, but, but to make this point, and I just literally did this, I had a, a Silverado Duramax diesel, and I had a Ford F50 hybrid. I drove them 100 miles back to back, and I drove them towing. I towed 60 some miles of the camper and, and did fuel economy. And guys asked me, and I didn't anticipate this question, and I should have in the video. I just didn't. Didn't you, you do these videos? And you're just trying to anticipate every single question that's going to ask, and you never can, right? Yeah. But basically, I, I I drove 60 miles with each of these trucks back to back, and then I drove 100 miles, and the 100 mile difference in uh, real fuel economy, 100 miles empty, 50 miles out, 50 miles back, the diesel beat the gas engine by 79 cents. Really? Over the course of a year, that's $94.50 that the diesel would save you in fuel on a 12,000 mile cycle. Right. Over a year. When you could when you factor in deaf fluid usage, when you factor in difficulty finding some diesel pumps these days, sometimes diesel is a little hard to find. Even in my area, I have tractors running diesel. I still have trouble finding diesel pump, <laughs> diesel at some places. And you have some of the issues where some of the trucks, the semi diesel won't fill it in the half ton diesel yeah, yeah. hole. Like deal. And you also have the fact that, and, and I didn't realize this until I drove the Missouri and back with a Duramax, diesel pumps are freaking nasty. Like I've never taken gloves with me to fill up a truck, but when I have a <laughs> diesel, I take a set of gloves with me because it's, it's just nasty. It's just, yeah. it, they always, it's, I don't know why those pumps are nasty. But so you have this American consumer who has not grown up with diesel, doesn't understand that fuel, you do the fuel economy thing so it doesn't really make sense they don't know where it's fueling at they don't understand how it works they don't understand how diesels work you have a little bit of delay when it starts up versus a gas engine right so it's got to you know even though these they've starting they start a ton better than they used to it's a little issue there right so i just don't know that it makes sense because the biggest thing that's going to happen in the full-size truck market and also the the if you truck, truck market is towing. Towing is a huge benefit to diesel. Yeah, that is the argument I can make for, for towing. When you look at a mid-sized truck, the only benefit I found was the ZR2 when we were rock crawling. That damn thing in a diesel format is a beast. You yeah. put it in gear, you take your foot off the gas or the, the throttle, and you just let it climb. And it's like a damn billy goat. Just goes right at the top of climb, right? Yeah. And and off-road speed, it sucked. Well, the gas and, was much better because you, you need trouble lag. You need to own the damn thing for ten years too. It's it, yeah, a diesel so, motor to make any sense. So yeah, I, I just in the midsize truck segment, I don't think the argument's there as well as it is in the full size and the heavy duty segment for a diesel. Well, I understand people that want it because I've had guys tell me like, "Oh, if you did a diesel in that, you get thirty five miles a gallon." Yeah, well, Ooh, you proved them wrong on your video, definitely. Right. I mean, it's physics, guys. A truck is a brick on wheels. It has drag. <laughs> it has, I mean, this is what happens. It's it's so yeah. I just I I don't know. I I don't. I can't make the argument for diesel like I used to. Depending, but it really depends on your needs. Like I get it. If you're gonna tow a small R pod camper across the country and you can do a lot of camping with it, you should buy a diesel. Yeah. You will get much better fuel economy. The fuel economy difference. Understand this between the the diesel and gas engine. When I looked at uh, empty. 
the difference in mile per gallon was about three. When I towed, it was between, well, the numbers were a little messed up, but it was probably about five to six mile per gallon difference when right. I towed. Okay, so, and, and towing with a diesel, I don't care if I had lower torque than I did the gas engine with a hybrid, towing with a diesel is just better. It just it just has more power at lower RPMs. It You can get, it just feels more solid. I mean, just it just feels like a better driving experience. So if you are somebody who's going to tow a lot with a midsize truck, which is a very small percentage of people that do that, then yes, a diesel makes sense. But when you look at the volume and you look at what, how many they got to sell to make that happen, I mean, you got to have a certain percentage. You know, you got to have that certain percentage going. And the only reason that Chevy still offers a diesel in the Colorado and Canyon, they were going to kill it. The only reason they offered it is because they build that diesel globally. Yeah. So they can yeah. offset the volume losses in the United States over a global marketplace. And then you have more of a business case. Because that and motor, if you, that if, motor if, is what actually an Isuzu motor, isn't it? It's, it's not even it is, really yeah. a GM motor. No, and GM is a partner with Zuzu for years. So it's yeah. like, that's the only way I can make that make sense. But you look at the Euro 6 standards are getting tougher. Mm-hmm. The EPA standards in the United States are getting tougher. Diesel is getting harder to build with the, all the emissions equipment. I was talking to uh, Toyota about this because they were, everybody wants a, a Tundra diesel and they want this, that, and the other. And he's like, and the engineer told me, he goes, it's two grand. It's two grand per truck to put all of the exhaust emissions on it. It's yeah. two grand. Yeah. So either I got to discount the truck and find ways to cheapen it so I can make the pr- price come down so people would buy it, or I just got to pass that cost off the, the consumer. He goes, that's my choices. I don't, he goes, I'm not going to magically all of a sudden have diesel equipment become cheaper. I'm not going to magically find a price point, but I'm going to love. He goes, it's just being more expensive. And you've seen that. Now, uh, GM just lowered the price of their trucks, uh, diesel trucks from 3000 to 1000 and this past year. And that's because the die cut costs have gone down. The R&D got paid for. They were able to do that, but it was a three thousand dollar increase for a long time, and I, a D, I, and the thing is, I love that three liter inline six they built. I, they have a great engine. I've driven the two point eight liter in the Colorado and the Canyon. It's a lot of fun. It's slow, but it's a lot of fun, you know. But it, again, it's I don't see that marketplace being big enough for Nissan to, to fit. I mean, look at the sales Nissan had last quarter for the Frontier. Shrank, shrank. Their numbers are all down. Right. So, well, but part of that, I will say, people knew it was this was coming. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's no secret. Nissan kind of killed, shot themselves in the foot last February when they were like, well, we're putting the heart of the, the next generation in the 2020. So they kind of dumbly hurt their own sales. Yeah, but I mean, even then, even then, their high point, they're selling maybe 20,000 a month, getting, getting lower, more competition, right? Getting yeah. that sales down. Yeah. The, the ironic part of the whole thing is every time somebody brings new competitive marketplace, the Tacoma sales rise. Yeah. And Toyota even told me, like, we don't know why. <laughs> like, <laughs> like but please keep bringing out more competition. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, don't question it. Don't, they well, don't question it. Yeah, just but, go with it. Right. All right. So, well, I mean, and I, you've done some stuff, too, where you, you've you talked about they can't really make any more Tacomas. Is, they're building at almost max capacity now, which is why they've been moving. And, and then they want to build more Tundras. Right. They, they actually and, well, they built a plant in, in the, we call it G Town because nobody that lives in the United States can say the name of the Mexican town um, that I decided with Toyota. <laughs> it's Guanajuato. I think that's how you say it. Anyways, uh, they moved all of the Tacoma production down to Mexico because the San Antonio plant was being maxed out. Yeah. And so Toyota is in a very interesting po- place where they have historically never been able to build enough Tundras to satisfy demand, nor Tacoma to satisfy demand. And the first time in like five years, they will have an opportunity to build trucks that meet the demand of the consumers they think is out there in the marketplace. And so not only do you have Nissan facing additional competition in the space with newer vehicles and different competitors, you have, oh yeah, the big giant in the corner who's like, hey, I'm ready to rock and roll now, guys. Well, who's never been at that point. And Toyota's in a good position right now to see what Nissan and some of these companies are going to drop. And they're just sitting there going, well, we got we got a, a new Tacoma coming, but if you guys add something, Toyota could quickly adapt to whatever they do. And just Yeah, I mean, Toyota's been really good about it, and they understand it. Toyota is always, always the last ones to market with new technology. Yeah. But when they do it, they do probably the best job of it. Right. And they don't care if they're late to market because they've, they've had the, their quality reputation. That's, again... You think of Toyota, you think of a quality reputation. You think of a, a solidly built truck. What do you think of when somebody says the name Nissan? That is a big question. Yeah. 
Well, even their new logo, like I really wish I, I like the new logo that they've done, but and I've said they needed to rebrand themselves for quite a while, but they, it still looks like the same logo. I wouldn't have put that on this truck to save my life on the grill. I would do kind of like what Ford did with Bronco. I would put a Frontier on the grill. I would very smallly show that we're a Nissan. It let let people sort of forget that it's a cool truck. Let them kind of forget the problems that Nissan's had and just stop worrying about your ego as a company and just sell vehicles. Yeah, I don't think it's ever going to be the case. No, I don't yeah, either. I don't no, know. No, you know, no, I guess knowing the Japanese culture more than I knew today than I knew then, I mean, you know, the Japanese culture doesn't understand trucks at all. I mean, yeah. you go to Japan, they don't, they don't have trucks. They don't have RVs. They just, they have big K trucks that they use to haul stuff around. It's just, it, it, and that's what makes it really hard. It makes it hard for anybody as an import company to understand a different market, right? So like if I was covering EVs and I'm a truck guy, I mean, it, it'd be tough for me. I'd be yeah. really hard for me to understand that marketplace. I know. I've seen Should your Tesla videos. I understand. <laughs> that turd. That turd. <laughs> No, but and I still get I, asked if I'm going to buy one of those turds. I'm like, no, <laughs> nobody wants to buy them. They just want the name Tesla. Um, right. Well, Tim, what what do you obviously you're with pickup truck and SUV talk, guys. Uh, I'm a small fish in Tim's world. But Tim, what do you have coming up that obviously you've been doing these comparison videos against your new F-150 you've got? Do you got anything cool coming up? Um. I think so. I think I, I, I was talking to Jill tonight. I have eight videos that I'm sitting on. Um, one of the ones I, I've been really doing lately, and I really do enjoy these, is I've been doing nighttime videos. Mm -hmm. And they're hard to pull off. I did a live stream. It was kind of terrible. I forgot which door was open. <laughs> don't, don't ask. <laughs> but anyways, I, I, I did a uh, XLT F-150 I had with a lim versus a Limited at night. And I was able to show projector headlamps versus LED headlamps. And I thought it was pretty interesting how that looked and out there and how that looked. And I did a, I did a uh, Silverado versus the new F50 because it's got a new zone lighting thing. I thought that was kind of interesting too, like to see the night stuff because you, you just never see that in yeah. reviews ever. And yeah. I, it didn't even click with me until I got new. So I went and bought the F150 and it had zone lighting. And I've been talking about it because it's a really cool feature. I really like it. It's like a real, real world thing. I've used it. Shit, I've used it numerous times. And so I, I really want to show that off because I think it's awesome. And so I've done some videos on that. Um, we, uh, on my plate also, I, oh, there's a gentleman who did a 30 day review of his F-150 and he had a bunch of problems with it. Mm -hmm. And we do a six month review with this guy again. And that pissed off a lot of four people on my channel. So it'd be interesting to get that back, guy back on. He's going to be really fired up with stuff. <laughs> I got a Hellcat Durango SRT Hellcat in the driveway. That's like a, I don't know, what is it, 710 yeah, you, horsepower? You're, whatever. You, you're so lucky with that one, man, because I, I would love to do some time in that one. I, I can't. I, I They emailed me today and they said, do you have any questions? There's a press kit, whatever. And I said, yeah, I have just one question. I said, how in the hell am I supposed to review this thing when I can't stop smiling every time I drive it? <laughs> <laughs> like, it just, it, I, uh, here's what I do. It's got remote start. Mm -hmm. And I stand behind it and I just start it and watch and just stand there. <laughs> Cause it's got the <laughs> exhaust note, right? And it's like, I just, I can't stop sitting there watching this thing go. So, I mean, I got that coming down the pipeline. Um, I, I got a really interesting talk with one of the top EV journalists in the country that I need to edit that video. Mm -hmm. I mean, are talking about whether your trucks can get stolen out of your driveway from Biden. He's going to take your truck and like destroy it and bring your EV back. We don't go quite that depth, but it, it, it is, it is kind of an interesting stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I got the infinity. I've been thinking about in towing, uh, uh, this 5,000 pound trailer I bought with my cousins with the infinity because literally it's, it's a 5.6 liter V8 in it. And it tows like 8,000 pounds, yep. but I've never seen an infinity actually tow. Yeah. I don't know. I've never seen one. And I, I thought it might be interesting just to do that, just to tow it up the hill and go 260 miles, whatever, and see what it does. Because basically it's Nissan Titan engine. And you know, mm -hmm. I can't get a Titan. So I figure yeah. what the hell I might as well just go with that. But it's amazing. And then, you know, you can get Infinity, but you can't get a Nissan Titan. That's yeah, I got to stroke weird. my beard. It, well, it's it's weird. And, then, you and, know, I we got and I can't get any of them right now for probably the same reasons. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I'm I'm excited about what we have coming down the pipeline. I've been kind of killing my channel with Ford content, which I feel bad about. But yeah, I understand. You know, that. It, but it's it, it, at the end of the day, it's like I have one of the only XLT hybrids in the country, mm -hmm. and so I got to make hay with what I have. 
I don't remember what else is in my, my calendar. I was hoping to get, um, I was thinking there's more trucks coming, but yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm doing that stuff. And then I'm, I'm secretly planning a, a trip to Montana. I want to go up there hiking with my buddy, who's one of the most uh, well-renowned uh, photographers mm -hmm. in Montana. Mm -hmm. He's actually had stuff in USA Today and the Boston Globe and other places. And so I'm hoping to do that kind of stuff with him. So are you going to be a, a Sasquatch? Of... Is that what you're going to do? You're going to be behind a tree, just kind of posed? And... Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I mean, we're talking about trading services. Like, I'll put my, his photos in my video. But I, what I want to do is I want to go get an R-Pod and go up there and go winter camping a little bit. Right. And run the uh, uh, truck off of the – because it's got that 7.2 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. Run the R-Pod off of the truck. I had a guy do that. He actually – his R-Pod's are a little small campers. And he was messaging me on, on YouTube. And he went camping in Arizona – and with his buddies, he plugged in his truck. He has a new hybrid that he got, new limited, I think he has. Plugged in his truck, and then he had his three other buddies plug in their R-Pods to his truck. They ran the truck overnight, powered all four campers, and he thinks he used an eighth of a tank of gas. Wow. And they were all running their furnaces. They were all running the microwaves, lights, all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. he thinks, and, I, and I'm like, for me, from my aspect... When you look at the marketplace, look at how people are not going to work. They're working from home mm -hmm. and this whole remote working thing. And now you have the question of you can work right anywhere you want to. Why do you only live in a city? And that's why you're seeing a spike in truck and SUV sales because they're like, I want to go. We're seeing an influx in Nebraska, Montana, Wyoming. These places where like as long as they have Wi-Fi or decent access to Wi-Fi, they can go camping. They can live, they can live a much simpler life. Don't need the big city life. And so then you take this mobile generator in this truck. And combine it with this off the grid kind of desire lifestyle, it really raises a lot of interesting questions. And to me, that's where the that's where the benefit of a hybrid is, and that's where the benefit of the electric vehicle market's going. Don't give me this electric vehicle that does zero to sixty in four seconds. Yeah. No. Give me a mobile generator that allows me to live wherever I want to and run a clean power source. And I'm all with you on that. I'm just not that interested in having something that looks like a bulletproof tank going down the road. <laughs> Well, Tim, I appreciate you jumping on here tonight, man. Uh, this would have probably been a lot shorter video, but it probably wouldn't have been as fun, man. So, uh, uh, guys, that's sure. that's it for Frontier content. Um, once again, go check out Tim's website. I'm sure if you've if you've seen my, you've probably watched Tim way more than mine. Um, until next time, Tim. Once again, buddy, thank you for thank you for being on here. And uh, guys, sure. I've got some videos on the All Terrain Nation dropping. Uh, in the morning and i've got some maybe a little more raw opinion of the frontier coming on all terrain nation so check it out there so from all things <laughs> nissan here in my studios to way in nebraska there with tim this is your nissan nation tim what are we Yo. what are we you know the catchphrase right uh oh uh, uh 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 i know this one <laughs> don't you put me on a spot it's uh uh no i know oh i don't know it i'm sorry joe taylor i'm hanging it. my head in shame uh, we're out, everybody. We